What's going on, guys? This dealer here back again with yet another episode of RDX Podcast. If you didn't know, this is the uh, podcast where you can get all the gaming news you want all in one place. We've got a phenomenal panel for you guys today uh, and tons of E3-related things to talk about, things that I think will be revealed at E3, new games, and more. But first, I want to introduce the panel, as we always do, uh, while we let people kind of filter in. So let's start with Cole Eastwood. How have you been, bud? Good, good. You can find me at Cole Eastwood on YouTube. And hey, I didn't ask you where we could find you. I asked you how you were. Well, uh, I'm great. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm just kidding. You just yeah, beat yeah. Resident Tomb Raider, right? Yeah, yeah. I've uh, got got a bunch of gamer score going. Been having a lot of fun. Yeah, it's great. It's great. D, uh, we brought D back uh, for everybody. Uh, D, how you been, bud? Good, good. It's a little under the weather today, but hopefully this show will perk me to fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all hope so. Uh, thanks for coming on. Uh, we've happening. also got the Ash and Luca for the Luca Holics out there. Hey, what's up, bro? How's it going? I am really looking forward to the show tonight. It's nice to meet you, JKB. I've heard a lot of great things about you. I've heard you on Crossfire, so yeah, let's do this. Oh, thank let's you. Let's do this. Uh, and of course, uh, we do have JKB. You guys might know him. He's been around forever. Uh, how you been, brother? Thanks for coming on. I'm pretty good. Thanks for the invite, man. Yeah, no problem at all. Uh, and shout out to over 200 watching already. Thank you guys so much. Hit that like button if you can. We really appreciate it as we go into, well, uh, first off, actually, <laughs> because we can't keep it too clean and non-toxic. I do have to reference, uh, you know, people are asking me even now on Twitter, what's going on with this uh, beaver face dude saying <laughs> you, you're hating on Japanese people? Uh, it's just a simple lie. Uh, he said that I made fun of Japanese people on a podcast. I asked him for a link, never got one. Uh, and it's just a lie. I've never done that. It's ridiculous. You guys know me. So just want to get that out there. I know that's a horrible impression, JKB, but welcome to RDX. We don't fuck <laughs> around. Uh, you know, and we really do want to get into the first topic uh, real quick, guys. And that would be, um, well, the ReCore uh, voice actress, right? Uh, I found out her name was Jewel, like the diamond, right? Diamond Jewel, what was it called? No, oh, it's the energy measurement, a Jewel. Oh, okay, yeah. Whatever, okay, I was close <laughs> enough. I just found it the same this time. Um, 21 so gigawatts. That, <laughs> that voice actress uh, basically took a selfie in her kind of mocap suit, right? She also did work for Halo Wars 2, apparently somebody told me. Uh, I think they're putting her to work on potentially what is Record 2, uh, maybe something else Halo-related, though I doubt it. What do you think about this, JKB? Well, Recore One, I think is, I think in time that'll be seen as uh, maybe a hidden gem here or there for some people out there who didn't experience it. It had that sort of unique idea of stealing cores out of the, mm -hmm. uh, you know, your your opponents in the game, and I, I like that a lot about the game. Yeah, I just think that the game itself overall needed a little bit more polish. But in saying that, I mean that's an amazing stepping stone to come off if. I, I just hope that they go with the right engine this time. You know, the Unity engine is one thing that I'm, I've am i never been a huge fan of. I appreciate that it's free for devs to get into that and all that sort of thing and opens the door. Mm -hmm. But I mean, with Xbox behind this, maybe we can get onto a different engine so we get some smoother gameplay. You know, not that it doesn't run smooth. It's just... I think it's limiting. It could be better, right? But, just yeah, for it, reference, the yeah. Unity engine is what they're making the new avatars out of. You know, so... It's powered by Unity. It's it's a game engine that they're using to build those avatars, but it's uh, definitely had its struggles in the past. Uh, anyone else got any opinions on a potential Recore sequel, Recore 2? Colt, I, I know you love Recore 1. <laughs> yeah, I, I played a couple hours. I'm not really inter interested. Do something else. Put her, Get her to do uh, something different, I guess. I don't but, know. <laughs> I don't know. In there a, with... You know, honestly, it is really hard for me to be excited about this. You know, I I, I expressed my uh, my concerns in a video a few few videos ago, and and I'm just not uh, into record. But as I said in that video, I'm not stupid enough to think that just because I'm not into it, uh, you know, that that means no one else is. So, uh, D, have you played record? What do you think about the game? Yeah, it was meh, mediocre at best, to be honest with you. And I know I, I touched on this, you know, recently in some other podcast that. I'm tired of these cartoony graphics. So you know what? If if they're if they're gonna come back with it, then then do it right. Give us, like JKB said, give us a, a a better engine. Give us something a little bit more modern, and then maybe it could work. Because the premise wasn't too bad. It's just it was just average. You know, mm -hmm. like it was just average. Yeah, it depends, right? 
Yeah, it's, it's, and that's something else they stated in the comments of that video. You know, with a with a sequel, with a bigger budget, more time, more importantly, and maybe even a new engine, uh, new mechanics could be incorporated, and that game could turn into something. You know, for instance, Witcher one or two wasn't a big fan. Witcher Ooh, three, Witcher two, the combat's pretty rough. Yeah, Witcher three, my favorite game of all time. So that's a big big example of how you know a game can really change, and a lot of people liked it. So I can't take that away from them. What's it is, really what is. what's really weird about Recore is it. In my opinion, it went up against Near Automata and Horizon Zero Dawn, which both had very similar pre premises, like fighting robots in a post-apocalyptic open world as a female character's lead third person. You know, they they almost kind of had the same idea, but Near Automata and Horizon Zero Dawn are like top tier games. And then you get on Recore, and you're like, eh, this isn't really. I, I just can't imagine that game selling <laughs> enough to warrant a sequel. What do you guys think about that? Mm -hmm. I mean, Top Dog in the chat, he says, he says, graphics cost money. And I guess that could be true to an extent, right? You put money into polishing graphics and time is money with developers. But, you know, graphics wasn't really Recore's problem. No, Recore was, it was yeah. decent looking. It was, it was nice looking. It was okay, you know. Yeah, um, and um, I, don't, I don't know, Cone. I don't know if you could, like, compare <laughs> it to Nier Automata and Horizon Zero Dawn. Like, the, they used they all seem very different to me and record came out uh, earlier. So mm -hmm. I don't think anyone was really thinking about mm -hmm. that game when they picked up those other games. I think record just failed because I don't know, like there are a lot of issues that people had with it, you know, like the loading screens, which is something that I don't really understand why anyone would complain about. Cause I, uh, you know, when it came to like bloodborne and stuff, bloodborne had like really long loading screens back when it first came out. And I didn't really hear anyone complaining about that. So that's an odd thing to complain about, but the gameplay got repetitive. People got sick and tired of it. And I mm -hmm. think it, you know, I think it has a chance. I think it can improve. I think it can get better as long as it's some more time in the oven, right? Yeah. I just needed some more time. Yeah. Hey, we got to give a shout out to Salty and uh, <laughs> all these people in the chat. Uh, Letha Papa, uh, Ashtray. Thank you guys for showing up. You guys are awesome. Um, so I know we got some NBA Jam fans in here. I was a big fan of NBA Jam. I think it was on the Genesis, right? Uh, turns yeah. out they may be working on a 25th anniversary edition and um, they're potentially working with Microsoft on this. This is a little topic, uh, you know, as we still let people stream in. Uh, any NBA Jam fans in here? I, am. I wasted so many quarters on that game. <laughs> <laughs> He's, he dated himself. <laughs> yeah, D and I used to hang out down at the arcade, eating nachos and playing NBA Jam. NBA Jam. Day, huh? You kids yeah. don't know nothing. <laughs> I'm too young to know what that is. Boom, Boom. shakalaka. <laughs> the dealer, are they talking 25 anniversary? Like they'll bring in like the uh, mid 90s roster and kind of cram that in there with current? You know, I'm not really sure. This was kind of outed thanks to the announcer guy, the guy that does the boom shakalaka voice. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Apparently, they're working with Microsoft. Potentially, this is something that you could hear about around E3. It's nothing like a massive bomb, but I think it's interesting. I enjoyed NBA Jam, and I think a lot of people preferred it to NBA Playgrounds. Is that true, Colt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, NBA Jam's better. I have the backward compatible version. Uh, it's like ten bucks on the store, and it's I don't know. I like it a lot. Yeah, let More us know what you think in the chat. JKB, you play NBA Jam? My father used to own a pool hall, so I actually experienced that in the arcade when it came out, and it was such a big deal back then. Like even non gamers would walk up to that arcade machine and end up playing it because of how unique the style was, right? Mm -hmm. So 25 years is a very long time, and I think it could do really well, especially if they bring in some of the new rosters from the M you know NBA League now, incorporate some of that, some of the main characters, uh, or sorry, main, main players, into the game as main characters, and then bring back some classics. I think it could be awesome. <laughs> Look, it's Mike Ibarra. <laughs> oh, my gosh. He loves our podcast. <laughs> hey, hey, what's going on, Leave some codes. Hey, uh, hey, Fonz, what's going on, man? Thanks for coming. I know you're a little late, but you're here. It's yeah, gone. yeah, a little late, but I'm here. You know, uh, I've just been, uh, but well, I finished Gears 4 recently, and that was a pretty yeah. solid game. Yeah, and uh, now I'm back to The Witcher 3, so I'm in that world and uh, I'm loving it. Yeah, yeah, uh, you know, glad we glad you could make it. And when you do miss people, I think it's an eternity that you haven't been on, so thanks for uh, joining yeah. us. Two hours in the background. Uh, we, after right after you join, I welcome you back by asking you to scrounge up some good questions for us and read them to us in that great voice. Oh no, no, no. that yeah, yeah. They're going to be great. They're going to be great questions. Uh, we do do the RDX live show question every single show on Twitter. Uh, you know, I always post that the day of. So uh, just so you guys right. know. 
Here's uh, an interesting question. If oh, I get these God. names, if I if I pronounce these names wrong or whatever, forgive me. But Mr. Zacone 77, I believe his name is. Um, he's asking, do you think the PS4 games will play uh, or the PS4 will play PS5 games when those launch? No. I don't think so. Thanks for your question, Mr. Zagone. Yeah. We deliberated about that. Yeah. Dealer was adamant that no. And I was kind of hoping they would do that to extend the PS4 life. But here's here's the thing I was thinking of, too, um, because you can expand that into the Xbox, uh, you know, One X. um, Because we were kicking the, the idea around me and some friends about the Xbox One X possibly playing the next Xbox uh, games. Um, you know, maybe at lower settings or whatnot. Uh, but who knows? I mean, do you think that's a possibility? The problem is, yeah. if you have a like a, because we know this is all but confirmed, uh, we know that the thing's probably going to be using Ryzen powered APUs, right? And if you've got a 30 frames a second game on a Ryzen APU, there's no way that Jaguar can run that same game at 30 frames. The CPU bottleneck is going to be immense. So I, th- I see some kind of separation. I think you'll maintain full backwards compatibility through x86 or, yeah. or at the worst emulation, but I don't see them coming forward because they have to take that leap from the, from the Jag cores now. All right. So we got another question here from at PSI 01. He wants to know, do you think the next Xbox will come with a choice as in <laughs> buy an actual console or just use the Microsoft game streaming service? Hmm. Uh, no, I think it'll be a next console. Yeah. yeah, there will be a next console. They confirm that. Uh, Cyrus Burke, <laughs> shout out to the super chat. He says, Fonz, read all 150 X one X enhanced games again." Oh man, that was crazy that day, right? <laughs> I forgot all about it. Man, that uh, was nuts. That was yeah, like they, our second episode in, man. Yeah, man, it was a lot of stuff. Uh, JKB, you a fan of uh, Witcher Three or, or or CD Projekt Red or anything like that? Yeah, absolutely. What do you think about uh, Cyberpunk? Their Twitter account just went active for the first time in years. There's an there's a site in Poland saying they will be there at E3 2018 in a big way. Oh my god! I can't <laughs> they're, wait, man. They're saying He's playable. They're saying, <laughs> that Polish site saying that Cyberpunk will be playable E3. That's Holy intense. Smokes. So it's been. Remember, we heard about this in 2013. So this game's been in development for five years. Yeah, when it, that it, game comes out, I'm disappearing. Sorry to interrupt you, but I'm disappearing. You guys won't see me again. I'm turning all my notifications off. I'm so hiding so offline. I'm like, don't talk games. to me. Yeah, <laughs> Luke is gonna burst into flames. <laughs> You're like, uh, a dealer's gonna be like, are you gonna come to the podcast? I'm like, I'm sorry, bro. I'm playing Cyberpunk. Maybe in a few months, you know, hit me. And back I'd be later. like, just kidding. There is no podcast. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about that, JKB? I think for me personally, the biggest sort of thing that I'm excited about is to find out where this is coming to. Mm-hmm. I know at what time it's coming to, which system. I mean, mm-hmm. nobody, nobody's really discussing that. What system? What do you mean? Well, I'm just curious if there's going to be any deals oh. worked out because it is an online constant game from what I hear. I think it'll be Xbox because that's where it was initially unveiled, I think. The Xbox stage. Yeah, so, you know, nobody's talking about that, so I thought I'd bring it up. It'd be pretty interesting if they were like, hey, Xbox is going to have it exclusive for one year. That'd mm-hmm. be a big deal. Oh, and my gosh. Yeah, yeah we, that'd be ridiculous. Know. That'd be yeah, a ridiculous we, deal. That would yeah, hurt um, some people's feelings. <laughs> that would be a game yeah. that would be able to move consoles, like, honestly. Because yeah. I personally think timed exclusives are a waste of time, but, like, that, the next CD Projekt Red game, yeah, that would... That would definitely move consoles off the shelf. However, I really don't think that's going to happen. That's massive. Uh, oh, we got to give a shout out real quick to almost 400 people joining us live already. Please hit that like button if you can, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, what were you about to say, Jake? Well, I'm just saying there's there's been crazy deals before that have taken place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, that's true. I mean, it's you know Microsoft's in a tough dis- sort of state right now. We, we've got the most powerful hardware, but we don't have any games to play for it. So. You know, we got to wait for the next, you know, AAA games to come out, or we get our own studios, or we purchase exclusive, uh, you know, exclusive rights to a game for a year or maybe two years. I mean, that's what they did with PUBG. They jumped all over that. And that I was think a- they're doing all of those things. I think they're in the background yeah. grinding away. In the meantime, they'll have this stuff uh, bought up. What do you think about the fact that that people say there are no games on the X when there's like 1,300 and, and we're playing no, all the same multiplats right anybody now? Anybody that says there's no games for Xbox is a fanboy of the PlayStation. Mm-hmm. Or PC. That, or or yeah. a PC, you know. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm enjoying yeah, Wolfenstein and all, and all the same games everyone else was, right? It's, yeah, it's like I've said this publicly before. I will not play another third party released on my PlayStation ever again. Mm -hmm. I mean, ever. you're not the only one. Andre Renee said that. I mean, she's a journalist, right? She's like, yeah, I'm moving to Xbox. Uh, so. that's but it's it's just it's the most powerful system. I mean, I can't you can't deny it. That's the end of that. I, I mm -hmm. don't need to go get a PlayStation Four when I have the X. And everything runs like it was made for that system. So it's there's no issues. Yeah, and some of the biggest, hugest, highest selling games are multi plat. So exactly. Yeah, yeah, it's that's you're playing it on the best hardware. There was some there was a joke somebody said that they walk into GameStop and they pick up an Xbox One game and the and the clerk goes, uh, didn't you mean to get that in the blue case on PS4? And they're like, well, I think it was the dealer said, Why would I get it on the inferior system? You know, kind no, of I, I was just making fun of the fact it's that it's kind of a joke. Thing. It's like, why would I get it on that now? Right? You just reverse it. Fonz, yeah. what do you think about the cyberpunk stuff, man? The Twitter account going active for the first time in years. You know, I just want to know what the hell is a cyberpunk anyway? It's gonna what be you that? this year. What is it? I have no but clue. No, I, I mean, I'm excited for the game. I mean, it, come on. Who, who Who's not excited for this game right now? It's uh, But yeah, just having that little beep there up on Twitter, it just shows signs of life. And uh, we're going to get something at E3 for sure. Oh, yeah. man. Everyone was super thirsty when they posted that beep. I was over there. Uh, I like quoted the tweet and sent the side eyes. A bunch of people quoted the tweet and were like, oh, my God, it's happening. Like, we, we were all hyped. Luke, <laughs> Luke is over there staring at that little beep for like two I, hours. No. I'm like staring at the Twitter account, like someone and like, what else yep. do you have to say? Like, what's going on here? <laughs> well, with a CD Project Red's uh, smoke alarm with a failing battery and learned how to use Twitter. <laughs> that's, that's what's going on in my house right now. I just got a, got a smoke alarm. I just, uh, it's annoying. Um, so I don't know. Uh, any other final thoughts of Cyberpunk? Uh, D, you haven't spoken on this at all. You, you play Witcher 3, right? Yeah, man. Uh, you, well, I played Witcher Three before, but now that it's back on the Xbox, uh, up, upgraded. Yeah, I, I've gotten right back into it, and I'm enjoying it now. Cyberpunk, I think, is going to be good because I, I'm I'm like a sci-fi guy. I love futuristic stuff, and to my knowledge, this takes place kind of like in a uh, Blade Runner esque kind of world. So mm -hmm. yeah, I, I'm looking forward to them, and their track record speaks for itself. They make good games, so yeah, I can't wait. And they've been working on this game forever, so I'm expecting this game. <clears throat> Excuse me, graphically to you know, to look uh, you know a leap over everything else because they put the time into it, and we know that these guys are dedicated to their craft. So I can't wait. Yeah, five years of of crafting what could be my new favorite game ever. And they said it's above what The Witcher Three offers. Like they said something to that effect, didn't they? Yep. Yeah, they, like, they reference Witcher 3 when someone asks them about, uh, I don't know, in case some people like in the chat missed and, it. People in the chat might have missed it, but during the EA Battlefront thing, uh, people are like, yeah, you know, CG Project Red, what's going on with uh, Cyberpunk? Are you going to do the microtransactions bullshit or or what? And the, and the account replied and said, no bullshit. Think Witcher 3 style, big missions and side narratives and, and all this stuff. And that was kind of a big thing, so... Well, you know what's incredible about that studio? I read this book that was written by some journalist who had sort of behind the scenes look into the making of the game. Uh, I forget who it was or what it was called. I think it was called uh, Bits, Blood and Sweat or something, or I forget the name of the book, but he, he has like an inside scoop of Witcher 3 being produced. And what's crazy is the studio actually came up with like triple the amount of the emissions for the game. And they basically said that these missions will either end up in the next Witcher or whatnot. So in terms of development, five years at that studio and the way that they develop, this game's going to be massive. Mm -hmm. Like That's an understatement to say. Like Witcher 3, we all know, is massive. But I, I don't think people are prepared for what's going to happen in this, like side missions and what you can do. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to just be... I don't think we've, we'll ever see anything like it. Yeah, yeah, and that's what uh, yeah. that's what puts Witcher Three in a league of its own. Every mission, for the most part, ninety five percent of them are worth a damn, and they've got narrative and characters. So I, I talk about Witcher so mm -hmm. much. I'm sure the chat's tired of hearing me talk about. Fun. Unlike Assassin's Creed Origins, <laughs> trash. Yeah. Oh my it god! Wasn't trash. No, it Come wasn't on. trash. It wasn't trash. But the ending, like by the yeah. oh my god, the end was mm -hmm. repetitive. It kept having like it kept making you think it was going to reach a climax only for it to like tease you and be like no this actually isn't the end keep going and that happened at least three times so by the time i was done with the game i was like thank god i'm done with the game the, this dragged on way too long also good thing i was doing the side missions all throughout so i was the right level and i was able to get through the end of it but mm -hmm. you know still a good game but 
uh, I don't think Assassin's Creed needs to be an open world. It just needs a good linear story. Sounds like my ex-girlfriend. <laughs> okay, oh that's our cue. <laughs> uh, so apparently, um, oh, Netflix is not coming to the Nintendo Switch as of right now. I threw this in here last minute because that surprises me. Uh, so I know you got a Switch, JKB. Um, are you yearning for the Netflix? <laughs> no. I, I mean, I can see why some teenagers would want that on their system, but uh, I'll stick to my 4K television for Netflix. Ooh, ooh, rich boy. <laughs> <laughs> I got yeah. no comment to that. I guess. <laughs> no, comment. no comment. I might sell a few rocks, but no comment. Uh, yeah, so they six, say they're looking into it. Time. Yeah, they say they're looking into it, but currently... Uh, there's nothing kind of in, in development. Oh, uh, it's talk- it, that you know, the thing is, though, I know something about that. That's just coming from the customer service rep who knows mm-hmm. nothing about what's actually going on at the company. Of mm-hmm. course, of course, Netflix is coming to switch. Like these people that put out these rumors are just nuts. a matter of time, right? Yeah, like get, like, get real. Yeah, does it switch uh, up a browser? Yeah, that'll be coming too. <laughs> Everything, <laughs> trust me, this E3. You know, Nintendo has to bring it. They have to bring everything now. They've got to bring the VC. They got to bring the internet. They got to bring Netflix. They also got to bring some sort of store to sell movies on as well. They got to go all out. They got to catch up, basically. Yeah, they got to do something. They got to just have basic shit from 2010, is what you're saying. Well, I mean, well, look at it this way. All we have right now is like really good first party games, which is amazing for the system. Mm -hmm. But then a ton, and I mean a ton, a very hard to decipher indie games. So if you buy a Switch right now, you're going to get Mario, you're going to get Zelda, you might get ARMS, you might get what this and that. But the point here is when you go onto the eShop, it's like a needle in a haystack trying to find something that you've never played before. So you're just kind of rolling the dice. And, you know, this also goes into YouTube and Nintendo don't really get along. Mm-hmm. But Nintendo needs a kind of get out of that you know they need some help in terms of being able to actually find a game on the switch it's almost in, their policy yeah right? it's, it's almost impossible so this this coming uh, e3 they have to come with something new like it just has to be like a ui update something you know what i mean that's going to be big news because they already dropped mario they can't just drop metroid prime and be like whoa that's e3 for us didn't they just delete like uh delay their online thing and all this stuff though well, it has been delayed. That's the thing. It should have been here already. So this E3, they have to show it. They have to show us the and the virtual console. They have to mm-hmm. show something, right? Mm-hmm. I'm not a Nintendo aficionado, mm-hmm. so that's why I'm asking you all these dumb questions. Probably stupid to you, but we just don't know too much about the Switch. We don't. We don't. No, I mean, the, the Switch is going to outsell a lot of things. I'm not going to say what, like, because nobody knows at this point in time. Mm-hmm. But it's already in one year done what the Wii U did in five years or whatever it was. Yeah, it's also, yeah, that's it's it's doing phenomenally well. That's undeniable. Yeah, and it's outselling the Wii. Don't quote me on that. I think I'm correct on the lifespan. Mm-hmm. It's outselling the Wii U for sure, but I think it's outpacing the actual Wii as well. And we all yeah. know how well that did. But yeah, we yeah. also we also know how many closets there's like Wii sitting in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's they're all in 160, 150 million Wii's in closets across the nation. Hey, we got to give a shout out to Punk Edition, the super chat. He said just a little something for the people of the panel, just a good, good panel here. I have to agree, Punk Edition. Thank you so much. Uh, so yeah, Nintendo, we're done with Nintendo. I'm sure some of you are happy. On to something many of us have been enjoying over the past hey. couple of days. I want to talk about Horizon Three, uh, our impressions as well as how easy it was to port to Xbox One X, according to the developers. Why did it take so damn long? So we're going to get into that. But I want to talk to uh, Colt about his impressions of the X version, seeing as Colt and I have been playing it at ultra settings, 4K on PC for a while. We know what that's yep. like. How do you compare that to the X? Well, uh, you know, you're locked at 30, which is the big thing you're going to notice right away if you've played both versions. But mm-hmm. um, boy, did they implement motion blur just right to get that. It's just uh, uh, such a smooth experience. And I was noticing last night, like the confetti when you're driving in and out of the festival. I don't know if they amped up more of the particulates, like the f- confetti coming down. Just everything just looks so much better. Although, you know, there's just, I don't know what they did. It's, it's, it's <laughs> well, just, what they did, Colt, is they, they quadrupled the resolution and yep. 4X anti aliasing. They said it's the first uh, console game to ever do that in history. Now, hold right uh, there. Like, you know, we talk about do you really need anti aliasing at, at 4K? They went four times anti aliasing. Yeah. So tell me what you think of, of that 
idea. Personally, uh, I if I don't, the, the Jaggies are so small at 4K, and I remember Dan Greenbolt talking about this in 2013, 2014. He said, you don't really need anti aliasing until you get up something like 4K. And I was like, that's odd. They're talking about that. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I would agree. Uh, when I was on the 480 with 5.9 teraflops, I didn't run anti-aliasing 4K, and that game ran great in almost 60 frames. Uh, but, you know, if you're stuck at 30 because of the CPU, the CPU will not allow you to extend your frame rate. So you might as well put those extra frames into something. And anti-aliasing mm-hmm. is what they dumped them into. So, you know, and it's an extremely clean game. Yeah, yeah they, they still have overhead. So. Pretty amazing. Looks amazing, guys. Uh, let us know what you think of the chat as well if you've been playing Forza Horizon 3. Uh, Colt, what's the story with the developer and the dev cycle? What's going on with the, the patch? Well, they announced that they do the patch uh, the week of the launch of the X, which is just a little over two months, you know, um, two months in a week, right? Um, they just said that they got, they had a code name for the dev kit. They, it was something like Chuck Walla or something like that. I think that's what they were, <laughs> they were talking about, but they said code they got Rick James, the Xbox. <laughs> dev kit. They called their dev kit. I mean, I don't know if they just gave it a pet name. They wrote on it with a Sharpie and put a little bow on it, but they called it Chuck Walla. And they said, <laughs> <laughs> which is, I might change my name actually, but what they, uh, they said, they basically just, uh, cranked on the dev kit, put Forza Horizon three in there. And they said before lunchtime, they had it running at native 4K. And so I think they spent the rest of that time kneeling down optimization, putting in those extra features. You know, there's better shadow quality car reflections are amped up on mm-hmm. this patch, you know, and, and uh, so that was the so, quote before lunchtime. Yeah. They said it got it done in the morning, which is so cool. And mm. this is a free, these are free updates that they do. And someone said, why did it take so long? Well, it's like, you know, playground games, they're doing this on their own accord. Any developer that decides to patch the X. The only thing they have to gain is hoping that maybe the sales will see a little spike from that enhancement. And uh, mm-hmm. they, they're basically doing this for the fans, these enhancements. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, they got to do it on their dime. And we, it's pretty cool, really. Their dime and time. And remember, Forza Motors 4 7 just came out. So I'm kind of buying the theory that they gave that game a little room. I got a question here from uh, Nate 50 Cal. He wants to know about this uh, Forza 3. He says, many people suspect For- Forza Horizon 3 could run at 60 by lo- lowering the graphics. Uh, are we seeing parity on frame rate here? What's going on? No. Well, I, don't, I don't think so. I think this is like, uh, like an open world game. So I think it's, what, CPU bottlenecked? Well, yeah, we've seen open world games run at, at 60, right? Particularly out in the open world like Witcher. Uh, it's just like you said, CPU bottom. This game is really intensive on the CPU side. Is that not right? Do you have yeah. the same experience on PC? Yeah. it's uh, In all honesty, I think if they wanted to, they probably could get it at 1440p, 60 frames per second. But let's be honest here. It's a fan service that they're doing for us. This game is like over two years old. They're, they're gearing up for Forza Horizon 4 this year. So I think they're putting all the resources into getting the best out of that game. So it is what it is. But, but my experience with the game and playing it all, all last night, I played it. Um, it's it's a great update. The 4K is is excellent on it. And like Colt was saying, the uh, motion the motion blur implementation. Okay, it's still 30 frames per second, but with the motion blur, it's it's a really smooth experience. It's not jittery, and most importantly, the frame timing is correct, right? So you actually do think it, it could hit 60. It just uh, you think it's a GPU issue. I, I I just I know I know that game's really taxing on the CPU core on PC, and I just you know I just don't think they could get it to hit 60, or or they would have given you a lower resolution mode. And um, remember, but, you know, for almost two years, we've been racing against PC gamers on Play Anywhere at 60 frames, and I didn't hear anybody complaining. I think it's funny we talk about parity between consoles, and there's all these games where uh, somebody could be playing at 60 frames or even more on PC, <clears> and it's not a big deal. You know, we're not yeah. we're not like sus- suspect of that. Like, man, I hope this guy over here in the red uh, Corvette is not running <laughs> at 60 frames on a PC, or else I'm going to rip him in the garbage. Right. <laughs> now, here's an interesting question from Ash Tree Gaming concerning this game. He says he's getting some freezing on this game. Anybody else? Oh, freezing. No. Yeah. Uh, I know Ashtray's in the chat. Uh, are you running on the internal or some kind of external hard drive? Because believe it or not, that, that does aid consistency once you have an On internal. some games, it does change it. Yeah. 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 Um, I've, seen, uh, I've seen one frame hang up for like a half a second. 
but you, you know, dealer and I have witnessed a kind of a strange glitch. I think they're trying to one, they're trying to figure out what's going on, but in the jungle, the, the shadows of the trees are running at like two frames per second across the world. Well, when you're sitting still, they're like, yeah. the lighting is still changing and, and going over your head, but you're sitting still and the, the lighting is the same. It's a glitch is what it is. And I'm sure they're already working on it now. So got more people in the chat saying they're experiencing uh, the freezing. So, okay. Ashtray wow. says it is on an external. Honestly, I'm not saying this will fix it, but when I had oddities, I transferred the game to the internal and I would see if that fixes it because it could be a pipeline issue there through your USB port or something, you know, just try transferring it to the internal that may or may not fix it. Also to uh, try a hard reboot after doing the update, for the, uh, the Xbox one X patch, just do a hard reboot on the system and see if that clears it up as well. Mm -hmm. That that sucks. Why why would some people get certain games uh, freezing or having hiccups on an external aside from you know being internal? I, I know that you say that it could be an issue between the uh, the the console itself and that thing, but um, the external there's more drive, there's but, more bandwidth uh, I think from the SATA port I think so. I'm just saying that that's the way the game is initially meant to run is on the internal. Ideally, it'll work on the external, but. Uh, I just had personal experience with games kind of acting kind of funny, uh, yeah. and I put it in the internal, and it just works. Jay, have you tried um, You tried Horizon 3, JKB? Yeah, yeah. I reviewed it on my show. You, the X patch? Um, yeah, I, no, I didn't talk about that in the review. It just um, Forza 7 is what I did with the, <laughs> with the, with the 4K, but um, I did update, and I did see it, and I was like, oh, God. This is like, actually, it, it gets me more excited for Forza Horizon 4. Yes. I mean, the idea of that being in 4K and then actually building the game to run in that, you know, utilizing it, mm -hmm. it could be ridiculous. And, the, and that uh, rumor that it's in Tokyo, from what I mm -hmm. hear. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, if it's at nighttime and you got the city lights, they, it's going to look, it's, yeah, it's just going to be silly. Hey, for those that missed uh, last week's show, we did cover a lot more uh, other little leaks for games that could be revealed at E3. I am buying a lot of these, seeing as they were leaked from an Xbox API SDK, uh, and it's the guy that leaked stuff last year as well. Same guy. Uh, and if you missed that show, Mech Assault, Perfect Dark, uh, he leaked the Forza Horizon uh, Tokyo thing. Um, what else did he say? Um, I'm blanking. But basically, a lot of good stuff coming. Uh, Forza Horizon 4, day one, available on the X, and its enhancement is going to be phenomenal. Uh, what are you looking for uh, in Horizon 3 um, to make that game a little different? Horizon 4, my bad. To make that game a little different from 3. Uh, I would love to see that this Horizon 3 enhancement kind of um, gets the word out to Playground to uh, try and develop a 60 frames mode on the X. So... You yeah. have those two choices, you know, a, a native 4K uh, 30 with all of bells and whistles on, and then a performance mode at 60 for those who are still on HD TVs or want to play the game at mm -hmm. quarter of the resolution at 60 frames, which still looks absolutely stunning. That's how I just played a bunch of games. I just went through um, Rise of the Tomb Raider at 60 frames. So, John G, 60 FPS on Forza Horizon 4. I agree, sir. I agree. When possible, 60 frames. JKB, anything you want to see to separate it from Horizon 3? I think it's about time they introduce sort of a more customized avatar and and kind of include that with your car. So, you know, these games are all based about or based on the fact that you can drive all these different cars, which I think is amazing and obviously keep that in there. Mm -hmm. But for the online mode, it'd be cool to be able to sort of if it's if it's in Tokyo to have your own little garage online and you know, have more people on a map and then sort of have more special abilities with your own car that you choose or within your garage and then to be able to go out and have the same paint job as your friends and stuff and just more you know more squads and that's like sort a of shared thing. world just a little bit more shared you know what i mean but also customize your uh avatars a little bit more yeah i wish luca played more games and wasn't a fraud she could kind of contribute to this discussion I don't like racing games, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's one game. I don't Horizon. like racing games. Horizon is one of those games that racing non-racing fans will actually enjoy. It's pretty pretty surprising. Yeah, you should try it if you can. Listen, I'll make this clear, okay? Listen. Uh oh. Shit. Um, I'm already triggered driving in real life. I don't want to think about it when I'm gaming. So it's well, no I'm already moment. triggered driving in real life. <laughs> Take out your aggressions on the real road out in the in the uh, game world. 
Oh, that might actually be. Or awesome. just do it, you know, like a lot of people and just get pissed in the game and go out in the real world and just ran the shit out of everything. Oh, okay. Whichever works. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I guess we can move on past that topic. We kind of ran that one to the ground. But Horizons, you know, it's right now it's Xbox's top rated exclusive. And I think it's worth talking about. Horizon 4 will be coming this year. Uh, looking forward to that. So uh, we do got this little release, I guess. It's. Um, it's left by a 343 post. So basically the hint that these guys at 343 are giving us is that Halo may not be coming in 2018. Uh, unfortunately, and that could coincide with, uh, you know, that Master Chief Collection update. There's a reason maybe they're trying to get people to reinvigorate that game, uh, make Halo last a little longer. There was also a rumor that PUBG Mobile was going to come to Microsoft's biggest franchise. Uh, technically, I don't know if that's Minecraft or or Halo, as I've said in the past, uh, but maybe they add that to Halo this year, Halo 5 this year, because there's no Halo 6. Uh, what do you guys think about this? Well, actually, you know, it's funny. If they brought the Battle Royale to Minecraft, that would just be, it would be so massive. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know how many people still play that game? It sounds odd, right? But it is a massive game. Yeah. I, I mean... I mean, all you everybody can make fun of it. I still play it. I still catch myself playing it once in a while. But if they brought that to that game, it would be disgusting. It'd be ridiculous. But um, in terms of Halo, I mean, does Battle Royale really need to come to every single game now? Or is that also just the next step <clears throat> of a multiplayer game? You know, because what did we, was this Halo 5? We have multiplayer. It's the same thing over and over and over. It's kind of interesting to introduce a new way of playing, right? So, I they think need to bring, yeah, they need to bring it to uh, Lawbreakers Battle Royale. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good luck. Uh, yeah, yeah. If, they, if they have enough shovels to dig <laughs> that game out of the ground, twelve. Uh, you could just picture it now. You're one out of twelve. You need eighty-eight <laughs> players. Yeah, right. <laughs> When I, when I saw that tweet the other day, I really thought it was a joke till I went and checked myself. And at that time, there was like 11 people playing. I was like, damn. No, that, that game is so dead. So, yeah. uh, we, we, we destroy Lawbreakers so often. We don't even mean to. <laughs> we don't even mean to, but it's an accident. Cliffy, Cliffy B destroyed Lawbreakers with his big <laughs> mm. He just said a few things he shouldn't have, and it just kind of made it worse. So, yeah, I mean, rest in peace. I, that was I played weird. it. It wasn't that fun. I'm sorry. That was just damn dude that was my game of 2017 <laughs> well the, the thing is if a game is good it's good people will play it people will tell their friends people will tell their grandmas come over play lawbreakers but if the game's not fun that's that there's no there's no questioning <laughs> you know underachiever in the super chat change your smoke detector battery seriously yes <laughs> hey, here's the story and it's going to take about five seconds i got 12 foot ceilings all right i'm not shack i need to literally go buy a ladder and I am frozen inside of my house right now. So now you have ten dollars. Uh, you know, it's gonna be a minute. Yeah, I do apologize. Somebody, somebody else donate the other thirty so you can get that ladder. Yeah, yeah. Just donate me a truck. Actually, that one, that's my problem. <laughs> Not to mention all the ice. So it so, already sucks enough walking to campus. I live like five minutes away from university. So. So Andrew Cheever is the one that looked up the Steam stats on Lawbreakers, and he saw that Shower with Your Dad and a game called Genital Jousting had the same <laughs> concurrent users. <laughs> <laughs> as lawbreaker. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Jousting. <laughs> what, what were those games again? Jousting. Genital jousting. <laughs> Can you imagine uh, there's more people playing genital jousting than lawbreakers? <laughs> hey, hey, hey. that to me. I'm like, I got to post that. That is just oh, classic. Cool. Where, where, where could I find this game? I'm asking for a friend. <laughs> I'll give it to you. Oh, my God. <laughs> genital jousting. And we can't forget the other one. Shower with your dad, too. <laughs> <laughs> Those are, those are real games, too. Just, just so some of the console only guys out there know, those are real games. On oh Steam. my god, yeah, real you games. Know, you know what's funny about those two, those <laughs> games, right? Is that somebody out there had the idea to take showering with your dad, and they spent the time to do it, and he's probably made it a million dollars off of it e easily in sales, just because people hear it and go, "What the hell?" Yeah. Buy it on Steam. I guarantee that guy's made some money off that stupid idea. Oh yeah, oh, I mean, yeah. with genital jousting, that's that's an amazing <laughs> name for a game. <laughs> Who doesn't want to do genital jousting? Come on, I want to. You know what? I might go. I don't know. I ain't gonna say that. So anyway, um, we got derailed. Yeah, we got derailed by some genital jousting. Jeez. It's crazy. Uh, hey, there's some more really uh, pretty solid rumors about an Elite Controller version two. For those that didn't know, I think this is something they might unveil near E3 as well. Um, 
there's some big changes coming to the Elite Controller. Now, this one came with some pictures, came from a Chinese factory. Hey, we got to give a shout out to 500 people watching this live real quick. Hit that like button if you can, guys. Thanks so much. It helps more than you know. Uh, Elite Controller 2 uh, pictures were apparently leaked thanks to this Chinese manufacturer. It does come with, and I, I mentioned this in the past, I like for them to play around with this, rechargeable batteries. Now, that's, I guess, that's maybe great. lithium or something. I'm not exactly sure, but either way, uh, you know, it ain't going to hurt them to play around with this. They got the money to do this. Uh, USB-C, now what that means for you and me, is extremely fast charging on those rechargeable batteries. It's also got uh, triple level trigger locks and Bluetooth. Now, uh, there's also some smaller features, but those are the main ones you're going to probably get this thing for. Price, we don't know. Probably 150 The old Elite's been out for how many years, uh, Jay? Two? Three at least. Two years? Mm, yeah, Three probably. Years. Yeah, so, I mean, it's time for a refresh. It really is. Uh, Luke, you got an Elite Controller, right? Yes, I do. What do you think about that? That there's coming out with another one? Well, just the controller in general. Oh, I like it a lot. Uh, I got it because I started, like, my fingers started hurting when I was playing Injustice 2. And when I would <laughs> <laughs> play Destiny, so I was like, let me get this Elite Controller here so I can lock the triggers. Um, but, yeah, I like it, and I like it a lot. Um, I hope they have different, like, limited edition ones like they did with the gears and hey oh they should do a halo one as well that'd be pretty mm -hmm. cool and i uh definitely think people if they do limited edition elite controllers should pick them up because as you can see with the current gears elite controller no one can find that for oh, the great exposer is a fanboy of me how you doing bud i don't even know who the fuck you are but how you doing? <laughs> can't stop talking about you apparently oh man i love it i love it i'd love it even more if you could link me to some some hypocrisy that wasn't edited out of context or two fucking years old. Well, anyway. yeah, so, um, what do you think? Um, what do you think about people saying that Xbox um, gets more sequels for their controllers than actual games? Uh, hmm? Well, it's kind of true. Yeah, <laughs> and you know what? You know what? Who cares? They improved it. They put that um, headphone jack in it, which is uh, heaven sent for me. Yeah, I hated that like big old fat thing you stuck in the bottom. Yeah. yeah, no, no good. The Great I, Exposer. <laughs> Stupid fucking name. <laughs> Tell me why I'm a fanboy. I've got <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> any, uh, <laughs> so Elite Controller 2 is coming to a store near you. Well, I love the Elite, by the way. It's just, I, I mean, this, it's unbelievable. Yeah. It's spectacular. It's good. It's good. Yeah, and people, it is it's expensive, but it competes it with, uh, it competes <laughs> with, um, the fuck are those other controllers? Um, yeah, the scuffs and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, but they're not worth the price. They're just not. Depends. I mean, unless you can make a controller yourself that has, you know, they're not six more battery or six more buttons. I don't but, even think we should be we should be spending sixty dollars on these regular controllers. To be honest. Yeah, they're a little oh. overpriced. They're to, let's be honest, they are a little overpriced. Yeah. yeah. I but, think it should yeah. be. I think it should be a hundred dollars. I think it's worth a hundred dollars. The elite controller. Yeah. I, I like all the functionality that it provides, and there's no other controllers out there that do it for that price range. You know, you got like the scuffs mm -hmm. and all that stuff, and they cost a lot more. So yeah, I just think it's a little spooky that it's been out for two to three years and they still haven't dropped the price. So, I yeah. thought maybe they were coming out with a, a a new one to bring the price down. You know, twenty five or fifty bucks or something. But you guys think it's going to be the same price? Yeah, they'll go in on high. They'll go high. Yeah. There's no they, they don't. Drop, yeah, drop it's it's. it's yeah, maybe the old one will go out of stock, uh, you know, 50 bucks cheaper. But the idea is to update it, get some new people in there. I always thought the Elite controller should have came with every Xbox One X. Oh. I mean, it's, I, you know, I'm lucky enough to just m email Microsoft and say, I want one. And they send it. And then I'm like, <laughs> oh, by the, wait, by the way, how much is this? In Canada, you guys don't even want to know the price. I need that. Five billion dollars. Yeah, it's, I, you know what? Here, you guys carry on. I'll look up the price of how much it actually costs to go to brand new Elite Controller. At, Five at billion moment. dollars. Let's see if anybody can Five take a guess. Five million Rupert. Five million. Hey, hey D, D might be able to ruin that. He's a fellow. He's a fellow Canuck as well, right? Two hundred um, bucks. Yeah, it's like two hundred bucks here for us or something. They're already starting to guess. Yeah, I I don't know about the Elite Controller being included in the X though. That Do you have one already, dealer? Already five hundred bucks. The yeah. winner in the chat gets a pickle. <laughs> it's gonna it's coming for Jay Fonzarelli's house. He's gonna mail it to you in an envelope. Ooh, it's still warm. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and dry. Hey uh hey Fonz, this is gonna be a good topic for you. Uh, uh Cody was uh put oh, on the yeah. Xbox One and then taken down 
now apparently it's up again. Uh, what do you think is going on with this app? Man? I don't think, honestly, it's not an illegal app. Uh, no. Anybody should be able to download this app. It's yeah. just that certain functionality about this app, certain yeah. things you can put on this app can be deemed illegal in certain areas. But honestly, it's a free app. I mean, it, it, there's nothing wrong with it. You um, sound like you're kind of turning into like a, a werewolf or something, man. You might want to oh. drop in and, and jump back in real quick. Or see a if little, your mic is clipping I, on the board. I think what it was, um, I think they pulled it because some of the functionality wasn't working the way it was supposed to. So I think they fixed it and pulled it back because 18, which is the version that's on Xbox, it's not even out yet. That's like a that's like an alpha version. Like everyone's on 17.6. They haven't reached 18 yet. So it's like a nightly build. So it's not completely stable, which is weird. Why would you put that version on there? Put 17 on the one yeah. that's stable that everyone's using. So that's the issue. So I don't know if they did that maybe because there's no add-ons for that really yet because you got to really search for add-ons that work on that. But the reason I think it got pulled was just because of its functionality. I think they fixed it and then they put it back in. Mm -hmm. Could be. Could be. So Shady says, werewolves, where? <laughs> uh, yeah, so like I said in the video a while back, no, it's not illegal. It's a third-party kind of thing. It takes third-party applications, and what you do with those can determine you know how much hot water you're in or whatever happens. So. For the people... Getting their panties all up in a bunch. <laughs> if you have a Sony Android TV, uh, that app is on your TV. If you have an Android phone, uh, that app is on your phone. So just cut it out. <laughs> nice work, D. <laughs> yeah, You're destroying D. all haters in five seconds. Yeah, we don't really have any of them in the chat, but you fucked them up, D. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had one, but nobody gives a fuck about his opinion. Uh, so... Hey, I wanted to talk about EA, EA uh, implementing the same fucked up uh, patent on microtransaction game balance destroying bullshit, just like Activision did. You guys remember Activision patented a system where you could um, basically go online, get your ass kicked, and they were they were purposely matching you up against people at higher skill levels with better weapons to incentivize you to buy more microtransactions. You remember that? Oh. Right? Purposely ruining game balance in order to make you buy more microtransactions. Well, EA said, well, I see you up there on the ship mountain, and I, I raise you. I want to be up there, too. Uh, we did the same thing. And now I don't know how you patent two of the same exact idea. Uh, I'm sure there's some minute difference, but what do you think about this, Luca? Hashtag pretends to be shocked. Listen, these guys, these corporations are scumbags. I'm not surprised that they would implement something like this or patent something like this. Like, anything to get a buck out of the consumer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's getting really bad, though, when you're breaking your own game to do so. That's crossing the line, right? Yeah, and they'll do whatever, they'll do whatever it takes, man. Mm -hmm. uh, D, what do you think about this stuff? Uh, uh, man, I'm so tired of these microtransactions, much less ones that are forced on you. Like, are you serious? Like, you have an algorithm that puts you against people that are more that have more stuff than you to say, oh god damn it, I better spend three dollars so I can go kill Jimmy. Like that's just <laughs> I don't know. That just defeats the purpose of gaming for me. That fucking it, it, Jimmy. It's, it's always fun. Jimmy. It's always Jimmy with the, with the <laughs> it's always and Jimmy. Microtransactions that are cosmetic, sure. That that don't impact gameplay, sure. You know, that that if you can get a better weapon in a single player game, sure. But when it's implemented that in, in a way that affects multiplayer, like, I'm sorry, man. It's oh, just... yeah. Just like those pay to win baseball hats and T-shirts you can put on your new avatars this year. <laughs> 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 People are throwing a fit about these these quote unquote loot crates. Uh -huh. Microtransactions for Xbox. Is it on the list there, dealer? I don't want to jump. We talked about that last week, and that was a rumor. Um, we, so we said to take it with a grain of salt, but you know, if they do this, I think it's fucked up if they would implement loot crates into the into the dashboard. You know, but keep in mind, this sounds a lot like what they used to do. They used to uh, award you with avatar gear yep. for doing certain things, like in Arkham Origins, I beat Deathstroke without missing a single counter notification, and I got a Deathstroke avatar suit. Uh, and that's kind of what this is, but I guess it would be presented to you in a crate. They're saying that maybe they'll monetize this. I feel like Microsoft do not have that flexibility. They need all of the goodwill from the consumer they can possibly get. So I think yes. it's extremely stupid to do this, to charge yeah, for it, that right. is. Uh, JKB, what do you think about this um, patent? I think bullshit is about to happen yet again. I mean, like like he said, fuck Jimmy. Be very descriptive. <laughs> 
I agree with him. <laughs> like, if, if some guy named Jimmy is you, Jimmy? In, in Call of Duty because he's got better guns, I'll spend $10 to kill Jimmy. Yeah, why not? Oh, gosh. But to be well, honest, I, I mean, every couple of years, we always see some sort of new monetized idea that comes out of the gaming industry. You know, rem remember season passes? Oh, yeah. Or do you guys remember when you buy your PlayStation 3 game, it came with a code to let you play online? <laughs> and if you lost that code, you had to pay ten dollars. An well, online that, code that extended to every console, right? Well, yeah, but the thing is, where is that now? It's gone. So mm -hmm. I pray to God that these things go away. Because if they don't go away, you'll see companies like Nintendo come along and say, "Well, we don't have that bullshit." I mean, Nintendo's notorious for avoiding that that kind of shit. That what they do now is they say, "Here, spend an extra thirty, forty dollars, and you'll get your money's worth in DLC." which is spectacular for their games. But I just can't get over the fact these companies are like, how else can we get money? First, let's split off a big chunk of the game, make them pay for that in the season pass. But then on top of it, let's also screw them so Jimmy wins. <laughs> you know, it doesn't, Jimmy. it just, it's just like, it's never, it, it's never ending. You know, it's like, we spend, you know, D and I are getting royally fucked here in Canada because our games cost a hundred dollars as is. Yo. And then on top of it, now D's gonna, you know, pl probably play a certain game more than me. Now I have to spend another twenty dollars to kill D. Like it's, it doesn't make sense. Maybe D plays a lot of games with his TV off, though. It takes him a minute to figure it out. <laughs> Plus, you so. guys don't have Trump up there, so. Oh Ravens. God, let's let me, not, uh, let let's me not get political. <laughs> let me, just, yeah, Lord, well, let me just say this: being in Canada, seeing what's happening, happening like on Twitter all day, it's like it's literally pushed me away from the internet. Like mm -hmm. I just. It's just every day it's something he's done. And I'm not going to say if, if I don't like him or I like <clears> him. It's just there's so much complaining about him. It's ridiculous. Like, just get over it. He's the president. The end. Sorry, um, I did that. So why, why exactly uh, are games so expensive in Canada? Well, that's because of the – well, that has to do with the exchange rate. So fuck you, the United just States. Down. <laughs> yeah. The currency just but, down. But they still put a little bit on top of it because right now yes. it's, our, our dollar is worth like 80 cents something compared to a, a dollar American. So it still shouldn't be as high as it is. They still, they say, you know what? There's a there's an exchange rate, but let's grease it a little $10 more. <laughs> yeah, they I feel do. like you guys are paying a tax over there. You're paying a video game tax or something. No, we actually I'm, we actually are paying something extra that makes no sense. I, yeah. I don't know if Dean knows what it really is, but... It's like that is not my smoke detector, just so you guys know. No, that's a cat. I have that's a cat, that, a cat at the smoke detector. That's Jay's cat in the background. The cat is so cute. Holy crap. Oh, no, What's never mind. Right. <laughs> Feed that thing some Listen, Let me give you a backstory. That cat lived behind a fridge for like four years. Sounds like it's still stuck there. No, and then we, sa we <laughs> saved like that cat. Genital jousting. <laughs> Sounds like it's still behind. <laughs> well, that's great. I'm glad you were able to save it. Yeah, no, I think I, I think Jakey, on what you were saying, I think I think our games should be around seventy bucks. I think yeah, they should be that, but they're not. They're like eighty nine ninety nine. No, we're we're panhandling out here to get games. Yeah. Help me. Right, well, let's uh, let's panhandle this next topic. Uh, <laughs> oh, that was a new one. We do got to give a shout out to almost 550 people watching this live. Hit that like button if you can. Let's try to hit over 300 before the end of the show. Mm -hmm. That would be well appreciated. Uh, Xbox December MPD uh, actually came in ahead of PS4 for the first time in a while. Now, as I said in the video about this, personally, I don't care. We smashed everything last generation. It didn't change how much I enjoyed uh, any platform then. And, uh, you know, I definitely wasn't playing the Wii. So, you know, <laughs> what do you guys think about Xbox taking the biggest month or one of the biggest months of the year uh, in MPD over PlayStation? They did lose to Nintendo. Mentioned that as well in the video. Uh, any thoughts? No, I, I don't think about it at all. If you're not first, you're last. There's, no, <laughs> there's absolutely no reason why people are celebrating this because in the coming months, PlayStation is probably going to be on top again. So you're right. If you're not first, you're last. Yeah, just like just okay. just don't just don't don't brag about this don't be like oh ha ha you know we're over playstation even though we're in second place because that's nothing to brag about and people are going to be looking at you sideways when the next month comes and you're like and playstation wins and you're like you know what mpd sales yeah. don't actually matter what are you guys talking <laughs> about relax yeah i, I saw a lot of that with uh, a lot of the twitter guys like uh from the sony guys they were like mpds don't lie and blah 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 and then when the x took oh, it you know, it goes both ways yeah I'm really curious to see. Uh, I'm I'm thinking the X had a nice chunk of those sales. 
for the Xbox platform in December because it just seems like the X did really well from what we were figuring in uh, Black Friday time and for Christmas. I think the, you know, what was it? One out of five PS4s were pros were yeah. sold, you know, last holiday. I'm, I, I would really like to see what that ratio was with the X. Mm-hmm. What do you, you know think, Fonch? You, you, you're glad this thing's at least seeing well, the success? I want to know what it feels like to spend that much money in a 4K system and then realize you bought the second best one. That's kind of my logic. If you're going to spend, I don't, you know, four hundred, you might as well spend the extra hundred and get the Blu-ray player as well. Yeah, I don't, I don't really follow MPDs or any of the sales stuff, but I will say that it's it's good to see that all, you know, that there's competition and that all three are doing great and that Xbox is doing fine right now mm-hmm. with uh, their console sales and uh, uh, just waiting for those games now. That's it, you know. Yeah. What games are you looking forward to? Uh, for Xbox exclusives this year, I'm looking forward to State of Decay 2. That's going to be, I think that's going to be a surprise for a lot of people passed up the first one, even though it sold like four or five million. God, people, it was a great game. Yeah, it was a great game. Phenomenal. Can't wait for it. Uh, speaking of State of Decay 2, we've got a leaked release date for State of Decay 2, and this is something you'll undoubtedly hear about at E3. June 29th is the date, date that they're throwing out there. I like to know what you guys think about the validity of this. How likely is this? They did say uh, what is essentially the first half of 2018. What you said, June, June 29th. Uh, that's not a bad date. It's no. a great date. Summertime. Mm-hmm. Especially, I, it's a it's a good time for that game to get some shine because in the summertime, there's not a lot of multiplats. Yes, so it, it can have you know the whole gaming uh, mind share for itself over the summer. Hmm. I mean, kids don't go outside and play with their bikes anymore or anything, so they're going to be inside playing State of Decay. So. <laughs> and they really, you know what, I, not to date myself again, but they really don't. <laughs> they don't. They don't. <laughs> D's like, no, what? They really don't. D's like, my kids go outside and they're like, boxes and put tires on them. The sun, it burns my eyes. Got to go back yeah. inside. <laughs> I, I kick my kids out. They come back in, and I'm like, what's wrong? They said, there's this big yellow ball in the sky that's burning our skin. <laughs> I like, covered it with my phone. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so I think that's a great day. And people think that that's the thing. I, I'm glad these companies are figuring out that gaming is a year round hobby, right? Uh, yeah. Fortnite came out, I think, in June or July and did phenomenally uh, as well. So I don't, I don't think that's a rule that you can't just release some stuff. If it's good, it's going to sell, hopefully. So looking forward to State of Decay 2 uh, running on Unreal Engine 4. Uh, yeah. Once again, if it can be done, 60 frames. Don't think it'll be done on the console, though. Also, uh, if you're going to put a PUBG mode in anything, as I said last week, put a PUBG mode in State of Decay 2. Keep those zombies yeah. on the map. 100 players, you know, people trying to survive, gathering resources, boarding up windows, mm-hmm. zombies everywhere, 99 other players everywhere else, and, you know, they're firing their weapons, trying to stay alive while, you know, and they could give away the position. I think it's very well, a very good use. That's a good idea. Cool. Matches that's the cool. last two years. Yeah, I'd play it. I would actually, you know what? I would totally play a game where a match lasted three hours. That'd be, you know, that'd be a lot of fun, especially with that much at stake, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, somebody in the chat. The circle system, right? Where the, the way it reduces in on stuff. It, it would be maybe a 20 minute match, a 30 minute match, but I mean, I played matches like that in Battlefield, you know, longer, yeah. you know, 15 Actually, I just thought about it. Imagine the circle. Uh, instead of just one major circle getting smaller and smaller, can you imagine there was like other red circles where the zombies would essentially, you know, like the bombings in PUBG, instead mm-hmm. of bombings have like those circles show up and that's where like a, a serious horde of zombies shows yeah, up. Like a just, zombie, right? You know, that, and you realize, come like, out of the ground. Yeah, and yeah. you got to get the hell out of that circle. Or you're going to get <laughs> you're eaten alive. That's, that's, pretty that, that, that's pretty cool. But regardless, even if they just keep it as is, you know, four-player co-op is is awesome with this game. It it already excites me because the first game was so fun by myself that you know just adding the element of three more players with me or even one other player with me, it's going to be fun. It's going to yeah. be real fun. It's hard to get people to understand how great that game was, and it, unless they just play it, man. It's just yeah, how it, it had it had some performance issues. It did, but you know, I overlooked it. Um, it was real easy to overlook once you mm-hmm. got into that game. So, Does yeah. anyone know what the engine was? Was it Unity? Trash. I think it was the trash engine. <laughs> so <laughs> it was Unity. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, so yeah. that ex- that explains it. Okay. Unity yeah. extra trash. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the new one is not on that. Thank God. I'm real engine four. Thank goodness. Thank Jeebus. Um, VR rumored. Uh, Microsoft are going to make a push for VR this year, or at least introduce compatibility with certain headsets. 
uh, makes sense seeing as right. in, you know a little bit since this has hit the scene. Uh, also, it's worth noting that this VR on the X will benefit, unlike that of the PS4, by avoiding the base model. So they said with VR on Xbox One X, they are not uh, tuning yeah. for Xbox One S or the base Xbox. You have to have an X, and that is the lowest common denominator with VR, meaning Ooh, that experience wow. is going to be better overall. Well, am I hearing that correctly, though? They're, they're going to look at you know, using third-party VR units and stuff, compatibility yeah. there, right? People have that, already invested a lot of money there. Why not is, take advantage that, of it? Exactly. That is a fantastic way to go about this because then they could focus less on building the hardware and focus on games. Yes. And, and that's perfect. You yeah. don't have to worry about, like, stopping support on the VR headset if they have a first party. Like, good good point, Fonz. And, yeah. and, and it works like butter right now. Right now, uh, on the Xbox One X, there's an app that you can... Uh, stream your xbox one x to your oculus rift and you oh. can play it like in a gigantic theater with like a hundred foot screen hmm like you can a, do that right now like a vr tv screen on your face mode yeah and it and it, it, it's pretty cool can't lie and yeah. you have to understand um this is you said it's going to start this year 2018 yeah okay well, this and this rumor. well uh, you know, I, I think it's uh, about time, and it's good timing too because we have that movie Ready Player One coming out. It's all about VR and everything. That's going to get people oh. hyped on VR. It's going to sell PSVR units. It mm -hmm. will. Yep. Yeah, and a lot of people really like PSVR. Um, so you know, competition's great. Uh, that's the yeah. benefit of having the third party do their thing, right? Introduce a cheap ass headset that does well, uh, and let those third parties take care of all that investment and and use the X as a platform. Well, Xbox also has their own sort of AR sets, and mm -hmm. yeah. they have like a consumer-based one that's coming out as well. And uh, I don't know if that's going to play into it. Maybe. 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 Well, Luke, it helps that those are compatible with Windows I, 10 PC as well. Like the, if, if, if it doesn't take off on the console, you know, they're still moving and, strong with better hardware on PC. And there's other experiences you can do with VR. There's a whole entertainment aspect with it. Like right now on VR, they're playing most of the games, the basketball games in VR. So like you're sitting there. It's like you're sitting in the stadium. It's pretty rad. Luca was just about to say uh, she, she was getting a PSVR or something, right? VR is trash. VR is trash. Okay. I had that one. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Long. I know <laughs> a lot of my, um, I have a lot of friends who really enjoy it. It's just, um, I haven't tried it, and I don't really have any interest in trying it. So that's my stance I, on I, it. I'll, I'll say this, Luca, honestly, because I know you're a gamer. Mm -hmm. Once once you try it, it's it's life changing. I'm I'm not even being exaggerating. Just just go to your local Microsoft. Cool. Go to your local Microsoft store. They have the uh, mixed reality headsets. They have the Oculus Rift there that you can actually demo right there. And then you can have your experience. It's one of those things you got to try, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I'll try it out. But I do want to say, all right, listen, I'm, I do want to say, okay, listen. <laughs> so I watched this anime growing up and oh, yeah. someone got stuck in a VR world. And ever since then, I've had like this irrational fear of anything <laughs> virtual reality. So I really think that's where a lot of it stems from. But I will try it eventually. Yeah. If, you, <laughs> if, VR, no. if you're like me, Luca, and you have um, motion you sickness. transforming into a werewolf. If you get motion sickness, I'd watch out. You know? Yeah, I, I don't. Yeah. No, I don't get motion sick. So. Don't unplug that. It's still on my head. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get trapped in here forever. Okay. Uh, <laughs> this is so cool. <laughs> uh, That's what happened to me. <laughs> PS4 Pro Slim uh, is supposedly coming uh, maybe this year. They will announce a slim version of the PS4 Pro. I covered this a while back. Uh, now, this is only natural. They do the slim version. You might be thinking, wow, it's already really slim. It is slim. But they do the slim versions. It's the real reason they do a slim is to cut down on hardware costs. So that means there may be a new chip out that's uh, less expensive. Uh, they can reduce the materials and, and copper and the power supply, little things like that. They can reduce the price of the thing, maybe keep it the same price, make an extra 15 bucks per unit. That or, adds up. So that's or kind of why they do it. Yeah, now, now that's kind of a question I have for you guys. Keep it uh, the same price, yeah. In the chat as well, do you think Sony will kind of back up on this 4K Blu-ray thing? Because nope. uh, I remember their statement was, you know, we, we well, I do that when you can just stream it when we all know that 4K Blu-ray is superior because it's uncompressed. Do you think they'll back up and say, man, maybe we should slap a, a 4K no, Blu-ray in this? They're not going to do it. They, they released their 4K Blu-ray player for... Um, is their standalone player and their enthusiasts, the enthusiast market, you know, th they would prefer to buy a standalone anyway. So, so you don't I, I think don't, they'll cannibalize their own sales? No, no, I, I don't think they're going to do it. They're just, they're just not going to do it. 
it's too expensive. I think I mean, we can only guess what the 4K Blu-ray costs in the X. I mean, I'm assuming it costs Microsoft at least fifty dollars to put that in there. When you look at what that APU and everything that comes in the X, that makes it five hundred dollars retail. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't think that this this the Pro could have a version with the 4K Blu-ray in there and hold it at four hundred dollars. And there's Keep no in reason. Mind, the S did that though. The S did it a did. slimmer vision. Yeah, that's S why does. I think it's around fifty bucks. I mean, I'm just the guessing. S slimmer revision uh, came out smaller, better in every way. Uh, added a 4K Blu-ray, stayed the same price. Amazing. So it, it, it's potentially possible. Question is, will Sony uh, kind of back up on this? I want them to. Uh, you know, you want you want there to be more 4K adoption, and yeah, you know, they should do it. Yeah, they should. But like you said, they get standalone players. Some of the standalone players that cost more have slightly better post processing stuff like that. Uh, but you know, you'd be hard pressed to tell a major significant. How much are the shelf shelf standalone? Um, Let me look. You can get like a, a drive for your PC for like 150, I think. Yeah, um, but you know, to put one on your. Yeah, that's more expensive. I don't know. It just depends. There's probably some really cheap Chinese like knockoffs out there right now. Stuff yeah, they like go that. 100 to 200 bucks. Yeah, so, so. it's you know. Either way, it adds options and value to the thing you already paid a lot of money for. Why wouldn't you want it as a consumer? So, uh, that's basically the bottom line. Jay, you got anything to add to this PS4 Pro Slim rumor here? No, I think it's about time that they're going to make a slim version of it, and it'd be cool to see 4K in there. I just, uh, yeah, I agree with what you guys said, basically. I don't think they'll do it. Yeah, fuck Jeremy. Uh, Fonzarelli, you got anything to say on this 4K Blu-ray? Uh, no, nothing at I know all, you're, man. You're a home theater enthusiast. You want the yeah. pro to have a, a 4K Blu-ray, or you're like, eh? It, it, well, see, it doesn't matter to me because I, I buy an Oppo player. Uh, oh. I buy the top of the line. Players. Top of the line, the best one ever. Fuck consoles. Yeah, yeah. and I, I don't use my consoles for anything else but gaming. Yeah, oh, no Netflix, no none of that. Jeez, what a fraud! Do you use your cell phone to only make phone calls? Uh, no, <laughs> it's 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 phone calls and 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 porn. That's it. Oh, oh, God. oh God! You and Luca both. This reveal. Oh. God. <laughs> Uh, so if no one else has anything to add, and Luca, no, they need to hurry up and get the PS Five. No, I, I'll add that I do points. that. I do that on my phone as well. Okay. So oh my gosh. Let's three here. Luca, are you looking at getting a Pro or not? Are you kind of chill with the, the base PS Four? No, I'm good with my base PlayStation Four unless it stops working. Um, but other which, than that, which, I don't. Which could happen. Yeah, which could happen, but yeah. I don't have any. <laughs> I don't have any interest in upgrading to the Pro. I'll upgrade to the PlayStation Five when it comes out. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah uh all right guys thank you guys so much for tuning in uh all of you are amazing once again um hit that like button if you can it really helps quite a bit and thanks for coming out to the show also giving away wolfenstein 2 assassin's creed star wars battlefront 2 witcher 3 complete edition cuphead and more on patreon check that link out in the description if you want to uh win some games uh and once again guys thanks so much Thanks to uh, JKB or yeah JKB for coming out. Uh, tell people where they can find you, man. As we do our outros, you can find me at uh, youtubecom slash three kilobytes. Mm -hmm. I'll, put, I'll put that in the chat. I'll say something in there. Then here's my link. Yeah, and well, uh, check out JKB. He does uh, a lot of content. Cool. And uh, well, I haven't been doing any for a month, but oh, well, uh, <laughs> he does more content. I, I should say that I do have my own podcast show that we're working on with my co-host which I'm announcing here. I don't even know if I should announce it, but it, do it. My co-host for my podcast is going to be none other than Mooch. <laughs> <laughs> so it's Mooch. Me, Mooch and I are starting our own show. And what's it going to be called? It's going to be crap. Gamer owes me a hundred bucks. So, uh, <laughs> call it, uh, call it Mooch. You guys got that reference. You know what I'm talking about, but no, it's, it's um, no name yet. I, I'll, we'll announce it soon. When right, is it going to be on? It's going to be on Saturdays. Saturdays. Do you know what time? Um, we're working on that stuff, so it'll be it'll be uh, all announced very soon. No, my okay. my cat's gonna make an appearance. On it. <laughs> is it? <laughs> is it gonna be like? I should I should point out the cat's senile. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Is it gonna be a specific topic? Is it gonna be gaming? Well, it's not gonna be Xbox One only stuff. It's just gaming. Mm -hmm. It's gaming and maybe some a little bit of movie stuff here and there, but uh, it's mostly a gaming podcast. So okay. kind of like this, but you know, but with movies because we kind of try. Well, to no, no, not well. not that much movie stuff. Just you know, major stuff. But get gotcha, you, I got gotcha, you, I got gotcha, you, I got gotcha. you, uh, Luca. 
tell people where they can find you. I know you started your channel. Yeah, you guys can find me at the Ash and Luca on Twitter, and also uh, the Ash and Luca on YouTube. I just started my channel. It's been going very well. I've gotten a very nice reception. However, I did find out that apparently I'm the queen of Xbox, so I thought that was pretty funny. You know, I probably found that out from a troll. No one cares about. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> it's so funny though. But yeah. uh, other than that, really good show. It was nice meeting you, JKB, and uh, yeah, nice to meet you too. Um, a hey, uh, D man, thanks for coming on, man. Where can people find you? What have you been up to? Uh, okay, you guys can find me on Twitter at D underscore batch and at D batch on YouTube. And uh, I've just been chilling, enjoying my Xbox One X. And uh, I, I do some mining on my PC rig. And I have to say, I, I don't feel the downgrade when I'm really playing on my Xbox One X. So I'm just enjoying my X right now on my couch. Yeah, I'd say aside from the frame rate, I mean, they look pretty much identical to, yeah. to me anyway. So, yeah. I mean, it looks great. Uh, Colt, what have you been up to, bud? The most dangerous YouTuber on all of YouTube. Oh <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys, I just want to give out a fair warning out there. You guys be careful because if you watch my videos, I might just talk you into buying an Xbox. <laughs> and that could be the worst thing of your life. It is amazing. Uh, it is amazing how concerned others are with uh, stretching the truth and taking shit out of context and doing the. You think a 480 is a 1080 because they both have 80s. And that <laughs> blew my mind. That a flat out lie. That was amazing to me. So. You know it's What's crazy is I'm I'm having I'm with D I'm having so much fun and uh, mm -hmm. it's all the time that we spend on PC you're right dealer it is really the frame rate is the difference and but there are those games that run sixty there's so many games that we're playing at sixty frames on the X but man games just look great games are fun there's great games coming out I'm just I'm in a good mood I'm having a good time yeah, I, yeah. and I want people to feel the same way. It's, it's okay. You like what you like, man. I yeah. mean, we, we love 60 frames. We, if, I mean, not that these people watch the people, you know, people that always criticize us or, or lie basically, but <laughs> we, we are frame rate whores always have been. And we'll yeah. say it every single time. 60 Cole said 30. that he, he would take uh 4k over 60 though. You? Hey, you know, no, you, no, I didn't. You know what I'd love? <laughs> 60 frames per second in PUBG on my X. Yeah, that'd be yeah, great, that'd be right? Nice. Yeah. yeah, yeah. give us that. Soon, soon, soon. Hopefully. Soon, yeah, soon. I'm, I'm so. Witcher, Witcher and I just finished uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider on the 60 frames mode. But uh, holy crap. I mean, eight, Assassin's Creed Origins at 30 and Forza Horizon 3 at 30. Look, they're just beautiful games. I mean, like I said before, I mean, fun. we played we played games together on the PC. And we're like, let me go to 30 on the PC. Because I, I know you can lock it and games have gotten better recently. But but the, frame, bad. the frame pacing on PC is just... It's not uh, as balanced or, or as... Um, it's very juddery. It's I very like, like film projector fluttery at 30 frames on PC. But I don't know what it is about the, the console. You know, Like Fallout 3 isn't that... Or Fallout 4 isn't that great with the way they do the frame rate on the X. But all those other games look really... They've really locked it down nice. Yeah, it doesn't look like Fallout 4 has any motion blur. But yeah, my point is that I think uh, a lot of PC guys forget because I go back and forth. I own all the consoles and a 1080, 1080 and i7 and 16 gigs of RAM, unlike a lot of these dudes. And I can I can go back and forth and look. And, and to me, 30 is better on the console than, it, than I can get it to run on the PC. If I'm going really high resolution scaling... It just choppy and the frame pacing's off. Whereas you're aiming for 30 on the console, the developers made sure the frame pacing is correct for the most part, except for games like Rhyme. Rhyme on the Xbox One, the frame pacing was so fucked up, I couldn't even play the game. Uh, you know, it's very rare though. That's kind of my point. So, I mean, I understand when some guys like, I'm fine with 30, the motion blur is fine. Uh, but, you know, for me, 60 is the way to go all the time. As you guys know, if you're still here, you are the cream of the crop. Thank you so much uh, for showing up. Hit that like button if you haven't already. Uh, and we're going to get out of here, guys. Uh, Jay, let us know uh, what you've been up to and where they can find you as we leave. All right. You can find me at Jay Fonzarelli, both on YouTube and Twitter, and at Loot Chest Radio on Twitter, iTunes, everywhere. That's my podcast I have out there. We do that every week, every Sunday we put it out. And it's an all-console gaming podcast, no fanboy bullshit, no drama, just mature game talk. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, I have a video coming out tomorrow on my Jay Fonzarelli channel. And it explains where I've been, what's been going on with me, <laughs> and uh, why I am no longer involving myself to any any of this bullshit console war. Yeah, tune in. Yeah, I mean you've been you've been witness to it. Too much stuff is just lies, and uh, it's just ridiculous. So. Stupid neutral. 
it's, no, it's I'm just really bad. I'm tired of it. It, it. You know what? It's all about positivity. It's mm-hmm. gaming. It's it supposed to be about fun. Let's just move forward. That's Don't believe all. a guy that, that that's talking about someone, but he has that person blocked on every platform. He's probably a <laughs> fucking fraud. So, anyways, uh, we're gonna get out of here, guys. Thank you so much for checking us out. We're out. Bye.